so, okay, perfect. Hey guys, <clears throat> so this is Leo here. Hey Leo. There we go, let's turn you up a little bit. Okay, so Leo is all dry now. <clears throat> and we're about to do the haircut. So this is the last step of my process. Step four, the haircut. <clears throat> now, even though Leo is a standard poodle, oh, he's a Klein poodle. He's a little bit smaller than the standard poodle. Hey, what's up, Pauline? You are first. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, so. All right. Now that he is all combed out and dry and fluffy, the haircut is literally the easiest part. It's the most skill involved but it is the easiest, um, least amount of labor. So by the time I get to this point here, all the hard stuff is already done. I've already filed his nails even, uh, we brushed his teeth, we cleaned his ears, everything is done. So now it's just the haircut. So um, his owner is telling me that they're gonna go to the beach. So he, they want him a little shorter because you know the beach means he's gonna be getting wet, um, you know, sand in his coat. So. I usually do a little bit longer comb. Oh, here it is. The A comb, which is three, three, four, three quarters of an inch um, or 19 millimeters. So I usually do that on his body. But since he's gonna be going to the beach soon and they want him a little shorter, this is half an inch or 13 millimeters. So this is six millimeters shorter. See that? Six millimeters shorter than I originally, um, I usually go. So, and also it was colder, you know, it was winter time, so we left a little bit more. So, um, I have it over a 10, 10 blade, an Oster 10 blade. It was the one that came with these clippers. Uh, there you go, number 10. Anyways, trust me, it's a 10 blade. <laughs> you ever notice that the most untrustworthy people usually say trust me a lot? Trust me. Listen, listen to me, trust me. <laughs> Okay, anyways, so what we're gonna do is get the hair facing one direction. Okay, okay. Oh, thank you. All right. So we're gonna comb everything in one direction. as it's still flying out of the coat. Okay. That way. Nothing catches. Any other comments? No, okay. There we go. So, okay. again, because we're gonna leave a lot of head, almost like a Bichon head, I'm gonna leave this so that I can blend it in and work it. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm not doing anything weird. <laughs> it's like, what you doing? What you doing back there? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna save all of this. So I'm gonna start like right back here behind his shoulder, like right where his withers are. Okay, so, I'm sorry, buddy. Just go straight down. So I'm gonna blend it into this point here with the scissors later. It's only when I do back here, under the tail, I, that's when I go reverse, in there. Oh, guys, he turns so we can... Oops. Okay. So when I do back here, that's when I go reverse, to make it a little shorter and tighter there. And you can even do it for the other side so you see.
Tirar. See how that neatens that area up right here? By going reverse, so it's shorter. Alrighty, comb the hair again. So, because of the the type, you know, the long hair and it's kind of wooly, when you go through and you comb it back up, you're gonna see that it's very uneven. You know, the first couple runs, see, because it's kind of wooly. So when you go down the coat, the comb guy kind of presses it down a little bit, and so. Sometimes the hair will lay without actually getting cut. So that's why it's important to go over it a couple times. Comb it up and go back down. And here I'm just skimming. I'm not I'm not pressing in because if I do, it's gonna give me way too short here and it's gonna make him look too skinny like it's sucked in. So I'm just skimming here. So even here, I'm going to be skinning off. So just kind of highlighting that muscle there. And I'm going to go into the chest. And just kind of skim off. And then you can lift the ear even. Now the chest here, I'm going to try to do this angle here so it makes a nice V shape. So it makes a nice, you know, nice uh, shape for the chest. There we go. And this guy. Yesterday I showed a little trick I do here on the neck for the Bijans to bring this out and so I'm gonna do that for him as well. Anytime, I like to do that for most dogs, especially because the collar goes there. So, just go backwards so you get a little bit closer cut. There we go. Again, I went reverse here on the armpit because I want the hair here to be shorter. So I went reverse on here. And, whoa, that's okay. Jennifer McKenzie, thank you, June. You really have, no, you really changed my mind about grooming. It's all about the dog and not about the money. Well, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. 
money has a lot to do with it because if I wasn't charging enough, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to continue doing what I'm doing, you know? <laughs> so you have to find out how much it is that you need to charge so you can continue doing what, you, what you're doing. But that's the thing, rather than trying to figure out, um, try to charge as much as possible, I'm trying to charge as little as possible, keep the price as low as I can while still enabling me to continue, you know, doing what I'm doing. Um, Lisa Miloslavich. Oh, great, teddy bear trim. That's gonna be interesting, thank you. Especially the head, the way it's tricky for me. One on one, okay, perfect. What length are you using now? This is a half an inch or 13 millimeters. Um, and it's under a 10 comb, I mean a 10 blade. Okay, he's using 13 millimeters. Believe that's, you. yes, you one comb. Yep, thank you, David T. Um, and okay, Laura says thank you. So we got this side. See that? I'm just gonna keep going all over it. And I am gonna go over it with scissors, so I don't have to OCD out too much, but I do want to do as much as I can and get it as, as uh, smooth and even as possible with the clippers so I don't have to do so much um, scissor work and it saves a little time. Okay. So you see that? I still have this here, but here I, I did short so that when you look at it, when you look at it straight on, See, it's gonna, it's gonna blend evenly and nicely, right? It's still short and clean, but here I have enough where I can blend it. That way when you look at him like that, it doesn't look like, like he's short and then he has this big head just popping out. See that? Like a big cotton ball poof head, you know, sticking out of a Q-tip stick or something. You know, rather than that, we want a little bit of coat here, some length, so it looks, like, you know, he has a nice, you know, it looks like everything flows nicely, right? So, and here what we did, we just skimmed off kind of where the, the bend of the leg is right there. See how it bends right there? It's kind of where I stopped right there. So now I just have to do this other side the same way. Um, Balance and symmetry is the mantra for groomers. Oh, uh, why are you so tired? I'm doing all the work. <laughs> but yeah, balance and symmetry. So we want the dog to look balanced and we want them to be symmetrical. What we do on one side, we want to make it um, even. You know, we want to match it on the other side. Okay, so let's do this. And I start here, not here, here.
When you find your blades start catching a little bit, usually it's because there's some hair built up there or here. So I'm not sure if that's proper to blow on your equipment like that, but that's how I do it. And usually it's because it's hitting on some snags, some bundles of dead hair that's still in there. So you just want to comb that out again a little bit better so it doesn't catch. Alrighty. So it's not, now it's not catching. And just right, right there, right where the leg bends, you see that? That's where I'm gonna stop. Now, I usually do the legs with this, with the C comb, or sometimes even an E comb. Now they go up to letters because we're getting pretty long. This is 22 millimeters or seven eighths of an inch, so just right there about an inch long. This here is one inch long, so this is 25 millimeters. I used to do his legs with either this or this to keep his legs really long, but because we did his body with a half an inch, I don't want I don't want it to look ridiculous, like an Asian infusion, like flared legs or anything, especially because uh, for practical purposes, he's gonna be running around a beach. I'm gonna go with what I usually do his body with, um, 19 millimeters, the A-comb, uh, which is three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna go a little shorter with his legs, um, just because we want shorter with his body. But it's still long enough to give, to give it that nice balance. So what we do,
Okay. It's still, um, it's, I have to wait until she comes out. I never know. She lay here. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I completely understand. So, yeah, well, we are almost done just doing his legs and then his head. Very nice. We're almost done. Very good. Oh, you're such a good boy. <laughs> awesome. All right, thank you, Anka. Okay, so we're cleaning the legs up here. Good boy, Leo. You are so awesome. Oh, I know. Mom just came and left. Okay. Oh, let's see here. Um, yes, I understand. You start where the shoulder blades meet. Perfect. That was Laura. Jaden says, "Did you take the shot? Did you take the shot length up to the jawline?" Um, oh, yes, I did. Right here to the jawline. Yeah. Right. I did. Uh, yes. Jaden Bates says, um, and off the sides, but but left under the rib cage. I have a wreck doodle, and I want to try this on. Okay, have you ever tried to do an Asian fusion cut, Jennifer? Not really, because it's just not practical for my clients. None of them really want it. But I, I, I'm up to it. I, I would definitely do it. But um, uh, Laura says, such a good one. Yeah, and I'm not opposed to doing, I can even do a mohawk coming all the way down, you know, but nobody seems to want stuff like that, so. All right. There we go. There we go. Right down the leg. There we go. So by lifting this leg up, not only does it keep the other leg sturdy, but it also gives me some room here to get the clippers in there and work. And then again, I'm gonna go reverse on the back side here and on the inside to get a shorter cut. There you go. And so right here where the tuck up is, you notice I went through with the longer comb because the longer comb is going to give me a longer cut. And so it's not going to take that in too much. There we go. And so now, if you'll notice, this leg is much shorter. See that? That leg looks just big and bulky. This leg looks shaped now, see that? And it almost looks the same length as the body, see that? But it's not. It's a little bit longer. And now it even has nice shape. I just got a scissor around the feet. So. Okay. Uh, Laura Milos, Miloslovic, <laughs> Miloslovic. Yes, my clients also want practical cuts too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, the Asian fusion, like the flares and the exaggerated bell bottoms and all that, it's fun, but, you know, it would be a nightmare to maintain that.
Now, a little tip for the front leg. For the front leg, you know how I went reverse on the back leg to make it shorter here on the back side? The reason why I'm not gonna go reverse on the back side on the front leg, which I used to because I did it on the back leg, I'll do it on the front. <laughs> but the reason why I don't want it short here is because I shortened it on the back side here, right? And kept this front a little bit longer, the front of the back leg. So I wanna, it's almost like a mirror. So here, I could go reverse here on the front and make it short. And I can even go reverse here on the inside of the leg and make it short, right? Like that. And so I can go inside of the leg short, front of the leg short, and that'll shorten up the body on the front. But I want it to actually have a little length here since I'm shortening it up here. Just like I shortened it up here, so I want to leave a little length here. See that? So that's why on the back legs, I don't want to go reverse. I only want to go this way. So the back of the leg is a little bit longer than the front of the leg and with the rear leg I want the front of the rear leg a little longer than the back of the leg hopefully that makes sense okay let's see here Rebecca Sosa 1987 I learned so much from you and shared the knowledge with my co-workers thank you so much Rebecca that's awesome okay so now this side is done now we just gotta do the same thing to this this side here Good explanation, we got that. Awesome, Laura. Perfect. All right. Okay. See that, so you hear it caught. So then, see that? So then you go like that, like that. <laughs> uh, David, do you love how he keeps spinning around when Jim walks around the table? Yeah, it's like a dance. It's like a dance, really. Uh, and I use it. I, 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 rather than turn him, I just, I just kind of use it. Okay. So.
Okay, so now all four legs are done, the body is done. Now, what we can do is, um, I can go with a little bit longer comb, the one that I showed you that's three quarters of an inch, almost an inch long. Uh, you know what, it might be better just to do the inch comb, the one inch comb, and then, just to kind of cheat a little bit, and blend this ridge here a little bit. So it kind of sets that length for me. So when I scissor, I already have that length set. And then I like to do the muzzle as well, just to kind of give me that shape, start me on that shape. blocks in the, sh the length, the blocks, it gives me that, okay, so this is about how long I want the hair, now I just gotta shape it. Alrighty. So now it's time for the scissors. Alrighty. Should I do the whole thing with the Red Robins? Uh, just to prove a point. Nah, here's my curved shears. Um, still not oiled. Well, oiled, but you know, still makes it nice. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if that person is back today. Easy Malone. Um, anyways. Hi, Jean. You're the best. Wow. Thank you, Gina G. Hey, Pudgster95. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> you know, yesterday, uh, when that, when that uh, user kind of towards the end was like kind of criticizing everything I was doing, uh, just remind me of a nice quote. No one in, in the history of the world, no one has ever erected a statue for a critic. Okay, alrighty. So first thing I'm gonna do, yeah, let's use a bit of blenders. I'm gonna do the head first. So, let me see if I can see if I can get back here. There we go. Maybe I'll try to take it a little bit. There we go, get him to turn by making him think that I'm gonna turn. All right, oh, there we go, scissor flip. Just out of habit, I, I do that, because that's just how I've always done it. Um, but I, I see the benefits of flipping it in because now it's not poking out and it's hidden. So, I'm gonna go here, clear off the eyes, and head the wrong way. Oh, you can't see that. Uh, yeah, I don't know where I can put this where it would. Okay, so just so you can let me see. Okay. There we go. There we go. Um, that's how I'm cutting it. So let's come it back out. There we go. Right here in front of the eyes. And I like to I like to cut a triangle like that. That way, that way when you're done trimming it, it's a nice little triangle in the middle of the eyes there, like a little fan. When it grows out, it grows out into a nice little fan. So right in between the eyes there, with my fingers. So now we have the eyes. You can see. There we go. Look at that beautiful. <coughs> so now <coughs> you can sit, buddy. Let me sit here. So one time I did a Bijan head, you know, the Bijan visor and everything, nice round Bijan head. And his parents told me, his family told me that he looks like George Washington. <laughs> so now 
um, instead of doing the Bichon head, I kind of adapted, still around Bichon head, but more like a Portuguese water dog instead of a Bichon riser. You know, so still kind of the same idea. So we're gonna comb all the hair up. Oh, look at that, see that? It was even open. So again, flip it. And still the same idea. I'm just gonna be trimming everything nice and round and blending. So, you can, <clears throat> I like to start with the front of the head, the, the right above the eyes. Oh, shoot. Okay. Right. And this is still fairly a new technique for me, the scissor flip. So yeah, I have to keep reminding myself. Okay, so then, what I like to do is just go down straight. So I'm gonna be laying it at like a 45 degree angle. And right over the eyes. So I'm not gonna be doing that, um, you know, that V shape, that U shape visor that was a Bichon. It's just gonna be straight, just like I would do a puppy cut for a uh, Shizu, or a Catan, a Toulier, a Toulier. Oh, um, yesterday I was talking about how the Bichons um, split into different groups. And so you got the Bichon Frise, you got the Bichon Bolognese, you got the Bichon Havanese, Bichon Maltese, and the Bichon Tenerife, uh, which I believe is distinct, distinct now. But anyways, they also think that the Catan de Tulieri, um, they also think that they are Bichons that were shipwrecked on Madagascar. So this is really interesting. So there we go. So now we have the head kind of shape. Eyes cleared out. Okay, so now that we have that, we the other way. Sorry. That. So now that we have that, I'm just going to work this length into the rest of the head. And just like the Bichon, I'm going to treat the ear as part of the head. And just scissor the ear round into the head as part of the nice round to the bare head. So, I keep flipping my scissors because they are curved, and I'm flipping them to match the curve that I want. So, because the ear, I'm trying to make a nice round shape, I'm going to flip my shears this way so that the curve, you know, I automatically get a nice little curve with each cut. But then, if I'm going to go at it the other way, then I have to flip the scissors again so that the, sh the curve now um, kind of works with this side here. There we go. Okay, so I'll just kind of show you what, what I did here. So this year here, kind of is blended a little bit better into the head. See that, it's nice and round compared to this ear. See that? That ear, still kind of long and fluffy. That ear is nice and shaped. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, Jennifer McKenzie, do you sharpen your own scissors? No, I don't. Um, I, I have the sharpener thing at home, but I just, I don't. Oh, that dog is cute. Rebecca says, Wanda says, hi, June. I love, thank you, Wanda. David T, he turned his head to show us. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, got that here. And now, I'm gonna work back over to the other ear, to the other side of the head. Now I did notice, um, I watched a little bit of the stream I did yesterday just to make sure, um, <laughs> you know, like I was, I was kind of curious as to what I looked like when I groomed dogs. And I noticed I bounced my shears a lot. I didn't think I did. But after watching the video again, I was like, wow, I bounced my shears a lot. But, <laughs> um, kind of like archery, you know, it's not the proper way that you should be scissoring. But I guess because I've been doing this for so long, this same way, <laughs> I've figured out how to make it work for me. And I'm able to still get a really nice um, finished result, you know, end product um, using my unique <laughs> methods. Uh, kind of like Tiger Woods, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't drive, you know, hit a golf ball the way you're quote unquote you know, the proper way, the way you're supposed to. But, I mean, hey, you can't argue with his results, right? <laughs> so, I think it's kind of like archery. As long as you can develop a style that is repeatable, that you can repeat every time, which is consistent, and that way you can, pr you can always, you know, provide the same consistent results, I think that's all that really matters, right? So, but yeah, I remember last night watching the video, I was just like, oh my goodness, I should not tell anybody how they should be scissoring when I scissor like a maniac. <laughs> but you know, the way I've, I've gotten to it, where it's like, I see a hip piece of hair that's sticking out right here, I see it, and so I just go and cut it. And I, I just, I've just gotten to the point where I can just see a piece of hair and I can just cut it. I can just go and cut the hair that I want anywhere. And I know that I might not be um, doing it quote unquote the right way, but it's just, well even chopsticks, the way I use chopsticks, um, you know, it's not the way you're supposed to use chopsticks. Uh, you know, I, 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 read, I read the instructions on how you're supposed to actually hold chopsticks properly and I'm nowhere near uh, <laughs> that. But I get the food in my mouth, you know? And, and it's just how I've always used chopsticks ever since I was a kid. So, you know, I, I feel like rather than get caught up too much in the techniques and how, you know, focus more on consistency, you know? And, and like really, really uh, thinking about what you're doing and how you're doing it and how you can do it better each time. And when you do that, then you just start getting better over time. It's just natural. Okay. Income is coming in. Okay. Rebecca says, you always do it right. Thank you. Are those regular curved or curved thinning shears? No, these are regular curved shears. Um, 
My scissor technique is really bad, says Laura Milosevich. It cost me a lot of time. Still haven't found out how not to bounce and how to move my fingers properly. Um, Rebecca says, I'm the same way. Uh, drives me crazy. David T, true consistency is key. Even people who for people use for a knife all different ways when cutting a meal too. Me, cutting meat too, yeah, exactly. I think it really is, consistency is key. As long as you can be consistent, and that way your, your customer can expect the same results every time, I think that's all that really matters. You know, um, doing a decent job consistently is better than doing an amazing job sporadically. I hope I put that well, I hope I said that well. Doing a decent job consistently is much better than doing an outstanding job sporadically. So let's say that I did an amazing haircut for Leo here one time, and then all the other times, I just keep giving different reasons as to why he's not looking so great this time. You know, and I blame it on the clients, I blame it on the weather, I blame it on, you know, matting and everything. I just, you know, give all kinds of reasons why I can't do the same thing I did the first time, you know, or, you know, this one time. <laughs> but let's just say I don't do an amazing job, but I do a decent job, I do a good job, you know, and they're happy with it and, it, and it's practical and it fits their needs. And I do it every time consistently. That is more valuable to a customer who's paying for your services. It's more important to them that you're consistent than being able to do uh, an extraordinary job once in a while. <laughs> And during these winter months, when it's cold, I have to admit, it is a little tough. Every time the ch it's changing the seasons, during the fall, during the heart of, you know, during like the right in the middle of fall, when the dogs are really shedding hard, um, during the spring, during the summer, right in the heart of summer, when their coat starts to change, um, these are the times where it does require a little extra work, a little extra time, a little extra effort to get the same results. But that's the thing, it's understanding, understanding um, you know, what is required and then being able and willing to do it every time. Now, there are certain uh, clients who make it difficult for you to, to um, provide consistent results every time. Um, there have been times where, for me even, I try to explain why it's taking extra time. I try to explain everything I'm doing. I even offer for the clients to stay and watch. And I'll explain to them what I'm doing while they stay and watch. And they, you know, they still just don't want to do that. They just don't get it. And you know, they, they don't want to give me the time that I need to do a consistent, you know, good job that I'm proud of. Those kind of clients, you just gotta let go. You just gotta get rid of them because they're taking up space um, on your schedule where if you opened up that spot, you might meet somebody who will really appreciate your services. You know, um, some of the conversations that you have with this new customer that you haven't even met yet might be the, you know, the idea, the spark that just really ignites your life. You know, the person that might change your life the most you probably haven't even met yet. And you won't meet them as long as you keep spending your time with the people that you're familiar with because you're afraid of the unknown. You know, you'd rather deal with this person that you're familiar with, even though you don't like them, even though it's not really satisfying to do business with them, because you know them, you know, and they're familiar, and it's, you know, and you can count on that extra whatever you're charging. Um, you know, you're usually the harder, the harder thing to do and the right thing to do is usually the same thing. 
So even though it is harder to let those clients go because you've gotten comfortable with them, um, by embracing uncertainty <laughs> and embracing what you actually want, the kind of client that you dream of, you can actually attract them into your life and put them on your schedule when, when you start making room for them. A lot of times, the blessings that, that want to come into our lives cannot come in because we're not, we don't have any room for it. We, we have our lives cluttered with so much other mess that we think is important, you know, because we want to keep up with other people. We want to make sure if somebody else gets a new iPhone, I get the same, you know, a new iPhone. If somebody gets a new jacket, I want to get a similar jacket. You know, it's like, rather than do that, Just be, just decide what you want, clearly, and then be happy with it, you know? Okay. There we go. All right. But yeah, once I decided that I no longer want to do business with people who don't really understand what it is I'm trying to do and why it's so important to me. You know, people who just want to write me a check and be done with it, I don't want to do business with them anymore. And so, you know, I, I'm starting to realize, like, I need to do, I need to figure out what's going to make me happy and uh, not be afraid to, to want it, to go for it. So, now well, his head, hopefully he doesn't look like any of the US dead presidents. <laughs> okay. How's that looking now? Nice little round head there. Isn't that awesome? You look nice, Leo. My goodness. Okay, so now I just got around the feet and we're pretty much done. Touch up the angles. Okay. Irene Anessa says, how do you start learning styling? Um, you just do it. You learn it by doing it. Petco trained me and I just try and learn at least one new thing a day. Perfect. Um, here's the thing, especially with archery, now that I'm starting um, to learn how to shoot a bow and arrow, I'm, I'm realizing <clears throat> that in order to get good at hitting the mark, at hitting that target, I need to get good at accepting failure. You know, if I wanna, if I wanna get to the point where I'm a good archer and I can aim at a target and I can hit it, you know, I can, I can hit the mark consistently. If I wanna get to that point in archery, then I have to be willing to miss a lot and not be good at it for a long time, right? That's the only way I'm gonna get good at archery. And that's actually the, the way I got good at grooming. Um, I was willing to be bad at it, you know? I was, even though it really sucked, and I, I hated those days where I felt like, oh, you know, today was just really rough day, I wasn't able to do the grooms that I wanted to do, you know, the, the schnauzer eyebrows weren't really coming like I thought, or, the Scotty, Scotty eyebrows are a lot harder than I thought, you know, or like getting that poodle top knot, oh, you know, I whittled it down to nothing, <laughs> you know, but being willing to go through those days, wake up the next day and still be just as enthusiastic, just as motivated to go at it again. Um, that was how I got good at grooming. And it, it just took years, years. He's just got to do it. Oh, you know what? Speaking of hitting the mark in archery, did you know that in, <clears throat> in Greek, the Greek definition of the word sin is to miss the mark? Did you know that? You can actually Google it. The Greek definition of the word sin, to sin, means to miss the mark. And I was just thinking about that, how... how interesting that is because that really explains a lot it explains our our fear 
of failure, our fear of missing the mark, because we're taught from a very young age, at least in the Christian societies we are, that the wages of sin is death. You know, to make a mistake, to miss the mark, means death. So no wonder we avoid, you know, missing the mark. No wonder people will give up archery so easily after a few months, because even after a few months, they might not see the improvement in their shot, in their form that they wanted, you know? Okay. So my, my thing is, don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid to mess up. You know, don't be afraid of mistakes. And I know some people, some, one pastor was like, oh, you know, the Greek definition of sin does mean to miss the mark, but it means to miss it repeatedly, to make, you know, to make the same mistake over and over and, you know, knowingly sin, you know, to knowingly do, do something wrong. That's what makes sin so bad. And I was like, I don't know if that really makes sense either, especially when you use the archery analogy, because <laughs> when I'm about to fire off another shot, I'm pretty sure, I, I, I kind of know it's not gonna hit the bullseye, you know? <laughs> I had no reason to believe that it would. Um, and actually, I, I think to myself, I hope I don't lose another arrow, you know? But I fired off anyways, because I know that by missing that mark one more time, I'm still gonna learn something from it. I'm gonna see where it went. I'm gonna see you know, what I did to cause it to go that way. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, it's, uh, it's like, even though I know I'm about to miss the mark again, I'm still gonna fire that arrow. <sighs> because I know that with each one, I'm getting better. So, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure about this whole, you know, living a sinless life thing, because I just don't believe that life was meant to be lived error-free, you know? I don't think that that was the point of life, is to not make any mistakes. I think the point of life is to make as many mistakes as you can, um, safely, you know, quickly, and learn from them. Okay, so we got that foot. No, I am gonna soften it up with the thinners, so I don't have to go too crazy. But we got that foot right there. See that? Now, flip that scissor. There you go. Okay, so now we're gonna do this leg here. <clears throat> But yeah, but again, it's that comparison. You know, let's say I'm, I'm sitting there just missing shot after shot, and I'm sweating, and I'm really putting in a lot of effort, I'm trying really hard, and this other guy um, comes up, and it's his first time ever shooting, and he's like, you know, yeah, I've never shot an arrow before, you know, can I just get, get a rental, you know, they give him a cheap rental, and they show him how to shoot, and then within minutes, let's say he's just hitting bullseye after bullseye, you know, and he's right next to me, and he's just showing off, and everyone's just like, wow, look at this guy, you know? And he's just doing, so, it's just, he's a natural, you know, it's like prodigy. No, <laughs> it's like, all of a sudden, I'm gonna feel um, upset, or am I gonna feel, you know, less about myself because of this? You know, just because this guy might have a natural knack for it, or maybe he's lying, even. You know, maybe this is just how he gets his kicks. But yeah, it's like, I feel like that comparison, you know? What if I was actually making some improvements and I was feeling really good and I was like, wow, you know, I'm starting to get this whole archery thing and it's starting to really make sense. And then that guy shows up and now I hate my life and I hate archery and I'm kind of regretting the whole investment that I made <laughs> buying the bow and all the equipment. You know, it's like, just because somebody else is doing better than me, all of a sudden I'm not enjoying it. You know, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like it's this comparison that's really killing our, our joy. And if you really think about it, if you follow these people home, the people that you think are living such amazing lives, celebrities, you know, the rich and famous, 
if you follow them home, you may realize that it's not all that it's cracked up to be. You know, if you ever think about it, why are all the celebrities, not all, but like Johnny Depp, you know, his life is kind of on public display right now. We're just kind of watching him unravel. But Mel Gibson, you know, going on those drunken tire, you know, rages and like, why are the celebrities and the rich and famous and the people that we think have everything that would make someone happy, why are they doing drugs and going to rehab and getting pulled over for DUIs? You know? Like, Britney Spears says, you know? <clears throat> um, she's so lucky. She's a star, but she cry, cry, cry in the lonely nights thinking if there's nothing missing in my life, then why do these tears come at night? <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> when I first heard that song, I was like, wow, how profound. You know, like, she's right. That song is right. You know, if she's so lucky and she's a star, then why, why does she cry, cry, cry in the lonely nights, you know? Thinking, if there's nothing missing in my life, then why do these tears come at night? You know, like, it's because that's not where happiness comes. That's not where fulfillment comes from. The validation of others, you know, anything outside of us, um, circumstances, you know, that's, it's fleeting. Okay. So for me, I've gotten to the point now where I'm just constantly asking myself, what do I want? What do I want? Why do I want that? You know? Kind of reevaluating my goals, making sure it's what I want because I want it, not because I think it'll make my mom proud of me, you know? Alrighty, so now <clears throat> I'm gonna work on the last two legs and he is done. Did I lose everybody? My singing and all that. <laughs> Oh, Ann Johnson, just joined. Sorry, missed everything. Love your work. Thank you, Ann. Irene, Anessa, how, how are okay to fail or miss the mark if client pay for your service? Yeah, exactly. I mean, so that's the thing. When I first started, um, I didn't charge what I charge now, especially when I was a bather. I was getting paid like $8 an hour, you know? So yeah, of course. And then I agree with you, Irene. When when you're taking payment from a client, yeah, you want you want to do the best you possibly can. You don't want to miss the mark, but you don't want to be scared of missing the mark either. You know. And also, if if I do miss the mark, um, like I said earlier in the stream before this one, when I, before I lost connection, <clears throat> I don't take payment until after the service is done. And after the service is done, if the client says, I just don't think it's worth it, I'm not paying this, then I say, okay, I, I understand, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I missed the mark, you know? But I don't come back um, because I feel like after spending hours and hours and putting in a lot of work, if it was so bad, if the customer deemed it so bad that they're not willing to pay me, they're not willing to compensate me for my time um, or my, you know, for the service, then I just don't want to go back. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I'm doing them a favor, right? I mean, why would you want somebody that did that horrible of a job to come back? So, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying to purposely miss the mark. What I'm saying is, don't be afraid to miss the mark. Don't let that fear stop you from trying, from at least letting the arrow go. You know? Yeah, and you might lose one. <laughs> but it's I think it's just part of the part of the process. Now I have injured dogs before too. 
<coughs> I've accidentally cut a dog's ear. I've accidentally cut a dog's tongue, um, their nose, uh, you know, their feet. You know, I've, I've injured a lot of dogs. You know, I missed the mark. I missed the mark uh, repeatedly in my career. But it was early on in my career. I was still learning a lot. You know, I wasn't very comfortable in my, in my own style. I was still developing a style. So yeah, but in those cases, when I injured a dog, I never charged the client. And I also offered to pay the vet bill. But um, lucky for me, no one's ever actually um, called me out on it. You know, no one's actually ever uh, asked me to do that. Um, but yeah, I don't charge them for the service. And I offer to pay the vet bill if I accidentally injure a dog. But I'm not gonna let the fear of that stop me from trying to do a better job than I did the time before. So with my clients, I always want to do a little better than I did the time before. You know, always best my best. Okay. Because isn't that so rewarding to hear when someone says, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, he, it seems like he gets better every year, you know? He, I mean, he was already doing an amazing job, but you should see his work now. It's phenomenal, you know? <laughs> That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear people say, uh, yeah, I mean, he does all right, but he is getting older, and, you know, but you really, you should have seen his work five years ago, you know? That's when he was his best. I don't want people to say that. I don't want to hear that. You know, I want to hear people say that um, he seems like he's getting better with time. Okay. There we go. Ooh. Nice. Sometimes you're going to see some hair sticking out at, a, at an angle that you didn't see the hair before. And so I always just get it when I see it <laughs> because I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to see it again, you know, if I don't get it now when I do see it. Okay. One more foot, buddy. See that? Even though his head is all around, you know, he's using his head to try to block my combing, because the scissors are right there, I flip them and tuck them right there, it's no danger, even if his head is right there and close. See that?
go. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go through. <clears throat> See how clumpy his coat still looks right here? See how choppy it looks? So when you get the undercoat rake and you go through and just kind of rake out some of that dead undercoat that's still in there, look at that. It's like a magic eraser. All of the choppiness, all of those bumps just kind of go away. Look at that, see that? See how smooth it gets? So, that's a little trick. Just after you're done with your scissor work and your clipping, stop, buddy. Okay. He's so crazy, Leo. He's sweet, but oh, he's sweet, but he's psycho, a little bit psycho. <laughs> Got me screaming, oh, my, 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 my. Oh, he's a little bit psycho. He's soft and he's white, though. <laughs> All right. Anyways. Okay. So. Smooth that out a little bit. And you still feel it. There's like, you know, it's pulling, it's resistance, because there's still that little bit of that last season's coat in there, you know, that old hair. And they grow in bundles. So they just sit in there, kind of packed in, like sardines. <laughs> so by going through and just pulling them out, by grabbing that bundle, the bundle of hair comes out, and then that makes that skin smooth out, and the hair, now it feels much more smooth, silky, soft. There we go. Alright. Nice, buddy. See, just a little bit, but still. Enough to make a huge difference in the finish. Look at that. So now, oh. Okay. Laura says, oh, that's so right, June. Thank you. <laughs> Laura says, by doing your best and continue learning, you can only do your best. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you know, you can always try to best your best, but yeah, the best is, you can't go any higher than best. Thank you, June. I need to go back to work. Hope to see you at Atlanta Pet Fair. Yeah, I'll be there on Saturday. Saturday, um, I don't know what time I'm gonna get there. I'm just gonna go do some shopping. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see you there. Uh, Irene Inessa, 
I'll look for you, Irene. Um, well, I don't know what you look like, so. But if you come up and say, hey, I'm Irene, you know, I'll be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, CJ Johnson says, June, I start my bathing position Saturday. It's actually a tryout on my way to grooming. I'm just gonna take it day by day and learn from my mistakes. I'm excited, awesome. Uh, and good luck. Laura says, even if you are not perfect yet, clients will appreciate the love and effort you give their dog. That's what I can tell from my experience, exactly. Thanks, Laura, um, says Irene. Uh, Gina G says, love your work. Do you use a 7F or 7? No, I try not to, unless I'm doing a schnauzer's back, you know? Alrighty, so now I'm gonna go through with my blenders here. Oh, and Johnson says, I've just invested in a set of Andy's clippers and run over my, and to run, oh my goodness, okay. To run over my bitch who had three pups, who had pups three weeks ago, she's covered in yuck from, my deliv from delivery and pups. I took a three and three quarter blade, okay, three blade to her coat, I'm getting better, awesome. Alrighty, so look at you using some technical language there, calling your bitch a bitch. <laughs> Anyways, okay, I'm sorry. I, I still laugh immaturely at fart jokes and things like that. Okay, so I'm just trying to smooth everything out. So everything looks nice and soft and round and blended. I don't want anything to stick out, you know, and cause the eye to, to go to any, you know, I want, I want everything to look like it all fits together. It's all one harmonious um, picture or orchestra, you know, all the different parts are working together harmoniously. I don't want any one area to stick out. It'll be too loud. Okay. Go. And you know, dogs, they're gonna turn, they're gonna move because they're dogs, you know? They're just acting, they're behaving the way a dog's supposed to behave. So that's why, you know, when he moves around or things like that, you know, I just let him, I just work with it because, you know, he's really, when you think about it, he's letting me, he's allowing me to work on his body. So let's get the finished look here. Um, let's see, whoa, and John, okay, Gina, sorry, June, so you prefer to use attachment combs rather than blades? Yes, I do. I like to leave length and I like to scissor. Um, and John, haha, I'm from the UK, so perhaps it's lost in translation. <laughs> Brenda Bell, as a owner, not a groomer, I'd pay more for someone patient and kind to my pup than a perfect haircut. Nice. David T, very rewarding to be appreciated for what you do when owners recognize you. Yep. Laura says, okay. <laughs> and, so, and John says, I love June's work and the way he handles the dogs. 
Yeah, that's the thing. It's like um, you make you guys make a really good point. There's a there's a really good quote that says, "People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care." You know, nobody likes to know it all. Someone just walks in, oh, this is how you do it, and this is how you do it, and I'm perfect, I'm a perfectionist. You know, people just, you know, but when they know how much you care, now they care about how much you know. Um, but anyways, uh, David T says, side note, now you have me thinking, damn, I gotta get a good scissor flip going. <laughs> That's my, nice, but yeah. So here he is, all done. Look at that, oh man, you look nice. Nice, buddy. So I hope he has a good time at the beach. See, he's nice and short now, so it's gonna be practical for him running around in the sand. Look at that. Oh, buddy, look at how awesome you look. Cause dogs like you get groomed by guys like me. <laughs> to send down when I come through. I need a dog like you, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Pauline, awesome, yes. All right, guys, well, thank you so much. I'm gonna let him down now. Let me get his collar back on. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I groom dogs like you, yeah. <laughs> All right. There we go. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, let's see, Melora, he's so sweet and patient. Let them play now. <laughs> Dog's not bad either. <laughs> nice. All righty. So yeah, he is all done. Look at him. There you are, buddy. <laughs> I see you. Good job, buddy. You're welcome, Laura. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Anyways, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and clean up here. I'm going to go ahead and take